The next topic is uh, anesthesia for electroconvulsive therapy. Yes, sir. So, electroconvulsive therapy is commonly used to treat severe or medication resistant depression associated with mania or catatonia. Um, it consists of uh, electrical current, administration of electrical current applied transcutaneously via two electrodes, either uh, placed either unilaterally, unilaterally or bilaterally over the head. Two types, uh, two types of administration. One is unilateral ECT or bilateral ECT. Unilateral ECTs electrodes are placed on one uh, on one side of the temporal uh, uh, on one side of the temporal side. It is performed on non-dominant hemisphere. Uh, it decreases the risk of cognitive function. Whereas in bilateral ECT, it is preferred only when speed of the clinical recovery takes the priority. The aim of uh, electroconvulsive therapy is to induce generalized seizures with characteristic EEG changes. The clinical efficacy of this therapy is based on amount of current delivered, uh, uh, which is more than the length of the seizure uh, time. Uh, next, coming to the physiological effects. Uh, first is cardiovascular system. Initial, initially, during the current stimulus, there will be a parasympathetic activity for about 10 to 15 seconds, which is characterized by decrease in heart rate and decrease in BP. And uh, subsequently, there will be a sympathetic activity, uh, which is characterized by increase in heart rate and increase in BP. So, this increases the myocardial oxygen consumption. Due to the seizure activity, there will be a decrease uh, increase in tissue oxygen consumption. So, altogether, it decreases the myocardial oxygen supply. So, this increases the risk of infection or ischemia. Uh, LV, systole, or diastolic may remain decreased up to six hours after ECT. In uh, central nervous system, the cerebral oxygen consumption. Uh, the blood flow and the intracranial pressure increases because of the seizure activity. And uh, uh, the because of this disorientation and impaired attention or uh, memory problems are uh, reported, even transient ischemic def defects or deficits or uh, intracranial hemorrhage have been reported. Non-memory cognitive functions like intelligence and judgment are usually not affected. Then coming to the generalized physical effects, due to the seizure activity, there might be increased risk of fractures or dislocations. So preoperatively, the preoperative assessment um, in assessment, we have to look for the absolute contraindications or relative contraindications uh, in patients. Uh, there is usually no absolute contraindications for ECT. Coming to the relative contraindication, esophageal reflex disease because it increases the risk of aspiration. Any uh, three months of uh, within three months of myocardial infarction or cerebrovascular uh, accident increase in. Uh, uh, intracranial pressure or a congestive cardiac failure or untreated cerebral aneurysm, osteoporosis, glaucoma or unstable major fractures. In all these conditions, the risk of untreated depression must be balanced against the risk of anesthesia and ECT. Coming to the conduct of anesthesia, uh, the main objective of anesthesia in ECT is to provide rapid onset and offset of both unconsciousness relax for the duration of electrical stimulus and subsequent seizures. So first, the consent should always be checked. The patient should be fasted. Uh, sedative pre-medications are usually avoided because it interferes with the seizure threshold. The patient is encouraged to empty the bladder because post-op they might be associated with incontinence. And two or three assistants uh, must be present on the side of the patient's table to hold the patient during the seizure episode. Uh, coming to airway management, adequate pre-oxygenation is uh, necessary and also bite block must be inserted uh, to avoid uh, trauma to the teeth or lips during the seizure episode. Um, uh, induction, the induction agent of choice, gold standard is always methohexitol, uh, 0.5 to 1.5 milligram per kg. But due to its lack of availability, the other agents are uh, 
uh, other agents are uh, thiopental uh, 2 to 5 milligram per kg because it has a rapid onset and rapid recovery. Uh, but uh, the disadvantages may be ne it needs to be reconstituted and dysarrhythmia can be present. Um, the next is proper fall 0 0.7 0 0.75 to 2.5 milligram per kg has got a cardiovascular stability and less incidence of post-operative nausea vomiting and also a quick emergence but it has got pain on injection etamidate 0 0.15 to 0 0.3 milligram per kg can be used uh, it has got a longer duration of seizure it is the only intravenous agent which decreases the seizure threshold but is associated with risk of post-operative nausea vomiting and it has got a longer emergence time Mm. Coming to the neuromuscular blockade, the agent of choice is uh, succinyl choline. Dose is 0.5 milligram per kg. Um, uh, if succinyl choline is contraindicated in uh, such cases, muvacurium short acting uh, uh, non depolarizing muscle relaxant can be used, uh, 0.15 milligram per kg. If rocuronium and vecuronium are used, then sugamadex should be available. Uh, coming to the uh, the other drugs used, glycopyrrolate should be given for effective anti effect. Glycopyrrolate is always chosen over atropine because it has got less uh, central nervous system effects. And parasympathetic act of, um, and for sympathetic effects, um, beta blockers can be used. Uh, if the patient is uh, patient presents with increased risk of MI, then preoperatively dexmed or um, uh, glycerol trinitrate can be given. So during airway management, uh, adequate preoxygenation. After induction, the ventilation is usually assisted by face mask. Hyperventilation is given because it decreases the seizure threshold and it can prolong the seizure duration. Um, then, uh, and uh, the patient should be gently hand ventilated until the breathing resumes. Post -op, in post-op period, in recovery, the presence of trained escort uh, should be familiar to the patient, will be reassuring to the patient. Um, post-op side effects is uh, the most common side effect is emergence agitation. Uh, this can be mitigated by small doses of uh, metazolam. Other side effects are confusion, amnesia, myalgia, headache, nausea, vomiting. Have you ever seen an ACT being performed in any patient? No, sir. No. You know, where is it done? In psychiatry ward. Psychiatry yes, ward. So, is it an OT procedure or non OT procedure? Non OT procedure, yes, sir. <laughs> so, your first answer should start with it is a non operating room anesthesia procedure, NORA procedure. Okay? Yes. That is a very important point. I think you have not mentioned in your answer. Did you mention it? No, sir. I haven't mentioned. You didn't mention, no? So, this is one of the. So the indications for a NORA procedure where you are not doing it in your routine OT. So all your preparation should be to take care of any emergency that is required. Okay, so all the we have today to discuss NORA in a subsequent question. So we will be dealing more with that. So otherwise, I think we have done a fairly good job.